So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the impact of foreign direct investment in the short run. So we're going to imagine this as an increase in the capital stock of a particular type of uh, capital, a particular uh, industry's uh, capital. We're going to be doing this in the context of a small country so that the prices of the goods remain the same. We're going to have sector specific capital. So there's a, uh, a, cap, a, capital, a type of capital in industry X and a type of capital in industry Y. And we're going to use the labor market equilibrium curves in order to uh, uh, do this analysis. And as you see over on the right, we're going to be looking at the impact on the production of X, the production of Y, the real wage, the real returns to capital in X, and the real returns to capital in Y. Okay. Again, holding prices fixed and allowing the uh, amount of capital in X to rise. So that capital is coming in, presumably because foreign multinationals believe that they can earn higher returns in this country than they could in other places where they could uh, invest. So we have this initial wage W0. That's the, um, uh, that's the amount that labor earns economy-wide initially. And we have the standard uh, triangles uh, that depict the payments to capital in the two sectors. And now we're going to have the, the impact of the increase in the uh, capital stock in X. Now I'm going to draw that as a shift up in the value of marginal product of labor in for labor in X. Now why is that? You've got an, an increased amount of capital that can be used with labor. That's going to tend to increase the product, marginal productivity of labor at any, at any level in that, uh, in that sector. So you've got more capital to work with in sector X. The labor that's going to be there is going to be more productive. And we see this as, uh, so let's label the original point as point A. And here's the original point, or the, the new point, point B, where the two value marginal product of labor curves meet. And the first thing you note is that the wage in this economy has gone up. So prices are remaining fixed, wages are rising. That means that the real wage is going to tend uh, to go up. Now that really it comes about for a couple of different reasons. One, labor is going to be drawn into the X sector because of the uh, the uh, the expansion of, of of capital in that sector. Uh, the wage is going to tend to rise. That's going to draw labor out of the Y sector. And as the capital owners in this economy compete for the uh, the, uh, the given labor stock, that's going to tend to bid uh, the wage up. Okay, so let's. Now think about the quantity produced in, uh, in, in the two sectors. Okay, we had production associated with this original amount of labor in X. It has now gone up. So we've got more capital. In sector X, we've got more labor in sector X. The quantity of X production definitely rises. We've got the same amount of capital in Y. We've got less labor in that sector because it's being drawn into the X sector. So the production of capital in, in the Y sector is going to fall. As labor leaves sector Y going into sector X, the capital labor ratio in Y 
is going to tend to rise because the capital stock is the same. Labor has left. Capital labor ratio rises. That's going to translate into a decrease in the marginal productivity of capital in Y. Prices have remained the same. Rental rate in, in sector Y definitely fall because they have lost uh, labor to the expanding sector X. Now, the, the capital labor ratio in X is a little bit trickier because we've had an increase in the amount of labor in sector X and we've got an increase in the amount of capital in sector X. So at first blush, it's not absolutely clear what happens to that cap capital labor ratio and hence what happens to the marginal productivity of capital in sector X. So in order to do this, um, we need to do a bit of a thought experiment. So let's imagine that we end up at point C. Now that's not where the economy is going to end up, but let's just, let's just think about this for a second. So at point C, we've got the same wage as, or, as before, but we've had an increase in the labor allocation in sector X. So if at, at point C, the wage is where it was before, we've got the price of X Tang Seng because of the, um, the small country assumption, <clears throat> then, it, then it must be the case <clears throat> that the marginal productivity of labor, <clears throat> excuse me, in X at point C has got to be the same as it was at point A. Okay, we, had, we have an increase in the labor usage at that, at, at point C. That's got to <clears throat> mean that the capital labor ratio in X at point C is equal to the capital labor ratio of X at point A. And hence the marginal productivity of capital at point C and at point A are the same. In other words, the return to capital in X at point A and at point C are the same. Now that's not where we end up. We end up at point B. Now at point B, the capital labor ratio at point B has got to be greater than the capital labor ratio at at point C. <clears throat> How do I know that? Because the amount of labor used at point C is, uh, is, is greater than at point B. Because it's, it's, you're talking about a point where there's less labor used in that sector. So, sort of by inference, the capital labor ratio at B has got to be greater than the capital labor ratio at C. Hence, the marginal productivity, let me write this up here, the marginal productivity of capital of X at point B is got to be less than the capital marginal productivity of, of capital of X at point C, which was the same 
as at point A. Now, I know this is a sort of convoluted way to think through this thing, but we're doing it step by step by step. Bottom line with this is that, that since that marginal productivity of capital X at point B is less than it was originally, the returns to capital in, in sector X have to fall. So let's back up. What's happening is, is that capital is flowing into sector X from outside the country because foreigners see that they can get higher returns in this sector. As that capital moves in, it's going to dissipate some of those unusual returns. Okay, that's, you get more capital coming in that's going to tend to diminish these opportunities, these profit opportunities. That's going to tend to push the payments to capital down. Now let's be clear about this. For the foreign, for the foreign capitalists, they're doing better. This, these payments to capital and these payments to labor is what's happening within this country. So essentially, the capital owners in X inside this country are going to have more competition coming from abroad. Because you've got more capital to work with, labor is going to become more valuable. They are going to see uh, an, an increase in their real wage as capital moves into this sector. And this has economy-wide effects because workers are now going to see these opportunities in the X sector move out of Y into the expanding sector X. And we also have these impacts on the uh, production levels. So this short-run analysis tends to, to show us, in, in this instance, that the, that the impact on different groups within the economy and the foreign direct investment uh, is, uh, uh, is divergent. And if you think about this for a second, what the, when this is one of the reasons why uh, foreign direct investment can sometimes be controversial in the host country, because the domestic capital owners now face the possibility of, of having their return fall as capital moves in. And this is going to be a different story in the long run, but this is the, uh, uh, the story when we're uh, talking about FDI in the short run um, with specific capital.